Cities, Reimagining the Road to Digital Tourism. My name is Maitri Menon, and I serve as Project Officer at the International Telecommunication Union, or in other words, the ITU. Once again, I would like to welcome you to this webinar, which will explore the concept of smart tourism. Throughout this webinar, you will see that we'll underscore the best practices for the adoption of emerging technologies like AI, artificial intelligence, and IoT, Internet of Things, to drive digital transformation of tourism management, specifically for cities, especially in the context of the challenges and the climate change problems that cities are facing today. This webinar will also present the latest United for Smart Sustainable City deliverable on smart tourism, a path to a more secure and resilient destination. Without further ado, to kickstart the webinar, I would like to pass the floor to Dr. Bilal Jamusi, who is the Chief of the ITUT Study Group Department, for his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Welcome, everyone, to the episode number 19, Tourism in Smart Cities, Reimagining the Road to Digital Tourism. It is my privilege to announce that this webinar is being co-organized by the International Telecommunication Union together with UN World Tourism Organization and UNI, the Spanish Association for Standardization. Cities are making significant strides in the implementation of emerging technologies, such as the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence, thereby creating an ecosystem with sensors to collect data from heterogeneous sources and advanced AI systems to support decision making. Majority of these technology centric initiatives focus on improving the quality of life through energy efficient buildings, distance learning mechanisms, waste management, and reduced traffic congestion. One other application of AI and IoT in the urban ecosystem is for smart tourism, which is itself a concept focusing on leveraging frontier technologies to deliver better experiences for tourists without interfering in the city's operation or compromising on the quality of service provided to the city's inhabitants. In other words, smart tourism could be considered a part of a city's digital transformation journey to enhance interconnectedness, improve data sharing between different domains, assess behavioral patterns, and foster innovation for providing better quality of experience for tourists. It was estimated that in 2019, 1.5 billion international tourist arrivals were recorded. Tourists nowadays are able to benefit from their flight and hotel bookings being made available online. Even access to mobility services such as taxi and buses, tickets can be available through apps and other platforms. Such services are often made available in different languages, and they do not only enhance the tourist experience in a city, but also improve the ease of travel, especially for senior citizens. The data made available in the Internet of Things ecosystem, parsed by AI systems, can help integrate, analyze, and ultimately optimize decision making which in turn enhances the tourist experience, offers new business opportunities, and improves destination governance. Another source of data that can be leveraged is the data generated from social media and travel sites to comprehend travel behavior and information about the destination itself to understand customer preference, peak travel season, and services in demand. With the advent of COVID-19, the tourism sector was among the most affected with travel restrictions across the globe. This is taken as an opportunity rather than a challenge by the tourism sector, which bounced back by enabling the digital ecosystem to deliver, such as facilitated check-in into hotels, uh, generation of QR codes for restaurants, uh, along with enhanced virtual reality experience for specific destinations during the lockdown, etc. 
These aspects are covered in more detail in the recently published United for Smart Sustainable Cities report on smart tourism, a path to more secure and resilient destinations, which provides practical recommendations for establishing a destination framework to support cities in developing smart tourism destination platforms. You will hear more about this report during the webinar today. I'm also looking forward to learning from UNWTO, who are the UN experts on the topic of tourism, to shed light on what we should expect from the evolving tourism sector in the post-pandemic era and how ITU, UNWTO, and UNI can collaborate together. So let's begin. Without further ado, I'd like to pass the floor to the MC. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Jamusi, for the insightful opening remarks, which really set the stage for what we're going to witness throughout the session today. For the second opening remarks, I would like to pass the floor to Ms. Sandra Carvajal, who is the Chief of the Tourism Market Intelligence and Competitiveness at United Nations World Tourism Organization. Over to you. Good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you follow us today. It's a great pleasure to get to share this moment with you for such an important topic. Allow me first to thank the International Public Communications Unit for the invitation to co-organize this discussion alongside the Spanish Standardization Organization, UNE. It's a pleasure for UNWTO to join you and discuss the issue of smart tourism and smart cities. UNWTO is also very pleased to have recently joined the UN Global Initiative, United for Smart Sustainable Cities. We know how important tourism is for cities, and we also know how important it is to step up our efforts to work together in making tourism a global part of the effort to make cities more sustainable, more inclusive, and more resilient. We are also very pleased to have recently contributed to the report on smart tourism, path to a more secure and resilient destinations. Over the last three and a half years, the tourism sector has gone through one of its most impressive crisis in history. The number of tourist arrivals worldwide went back to levels of 30 years ago. The crisis has also, as you know, accelerated many changes and is requiring the sector to adapt and adopt new ways of working. Throughout the crisis, digitalization in tourism has been accelerated and so has the need to face challenges in a different way. Plan and managing tourism demand will be more and more challenging and technology and the concept of smart destinations and smart cities can make a huge difference in the way we move forward. Today, around 65% of all international tourism has been recovered as compared to what we lost in the pandemic. It is now an opportunity to use technology more and better. Digital has proven its value for destination management, but also to enhance the tourism experience empower the participation of citizens and monitor the impact of the sector. In that sense, the value of smart destinations, its methodology goes beyond the technology component. It enables our approach to be holistic, to have a destination management strategy that ensures resilience and sustainability and fosters the participation of all. It enables us to have a governance model that includes everyone, public, private, residents and tourists, also advancing innovation, universal accessible tourism and sustainability. This is the example of the smart destination methodology for developed by Spain and now consolidated in the Spanish norm of UNE that I'm sure you're going to address during this event. On behalf of UNWTO, allow me to thank again ITU as well as UNE for the opportunity to co-organize this webinar where I am sure that you will have very fruitful experiences to share. And I truly believe this is just the first step of a cooperation that will go stronger and stronger. Thank you very much. And I look forward for the very good presentations that we have today. Thank you very much for those enriching remarks and giving us a sneak peek into what the concept of smart tourism will entail. 
We will now move on to the session one and the core part of this webinar, which is dedicated to reimagining the road to digital tourism. Without further ado, I would like to pass the floor to Ms. Tanya Marcos, who is the Vice Chair of the United for Smart Sustainable Cities Initiative. Over to you, Ms. Marcos. Thank you very much, Mathilde. Um, good afternoon, dear colleagues, panelists, and participants. During the last few decades, the world has witnessed a significant increase in the application of technologies in the booming global tourism industry. It was estimated by the United Nations World Tourism Organization that tourists' arrival have increased from 528 million in 2005 to 1.56 billion in 2019. The synchronization and adoption of various technological advances for tourism are aimed at improving convenience and efficiency of operations for the comfort and safety of tourists. This has paved the way for the development of the concept of the smart tourist destinations. However, given the multifaceted uh, nature of this concept, additional analysis and studies need to be conducted on this same. Within the umbrella of the United for Smart Sustainable Cities, the U4SSC initiative, the report on smart tourism, a path to more secure and resilient destinations, was launched in October 2022. This unique report delves into case studies related to the adoption of mobile applications, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, virtual reality, with the aim of enabling a new level of connectivity between tourists and the services they wish to partake of. This report also highlighted that COVID-19 has caused an unprecedented global crisis during which tourism has been one of the sectors which was most affected. For the preparation of this report, we were delighted to have the inputs and insights from the UNWTO. It is indeed enlightening to witness the commendable work done by a sister UN agency within this domain, as they are envisioning new approaches to support the tourism industry in the aftermath of the COVID crisis, dedicated on the use of innovative technologies. I am honored to welcome you all to the episode 19, Tourism in Smart Cities, Reimagining the Road to Digital Tourism. This is a new topic that we are going to delve into during this webinar series, and I sincerely hope that you have a lot of questions for our panelists to keep the discussion dynamic. Today, we are having uh, Mr. Ramon Ferry, that is the leader of the U4SSC thematic group on city platforms and director of institutional relations in Segitur. He has um, studies in computer sciences and uh, from 2007 to 2022, he was responsible for the ICT service of the Valencia City Council in Spain and responsible for the coordination of digital transformation of the city in the field of smart cities. And uh, now recently, uh, from September 2002, he is the director of the Institutional Relations of Segitur, that is a Spanish society uh, attached uh, to the uh, Ministry of Industry and Tourism, and he's reporting to this uh, Department of Tourism, uh, responsible for promoting innovation uh, and uh, the use of uh, digital technologies in the Spanish tourism industry. We are also having Mr. David Giner, that is the project coordinator in the Institute, uh, Valencian Institute of uh, uh, Touristic Technologies in Batur. He is the head of the Smart Tourist Destination Network to the Valencia region in Spain, and he manages the Smart Tourist Strategy since 2014. 
and he's an associate professor, professor in the Department of Regional Geographic Analysis at the University of Alicante and part of the Technical and Scientific uh, Committees for Innovation and Digitalization in Tourism. We are also having today Mr. Sergio Guerreiro, Senior Director of Knowledge Management and Innovations uh, in Turismo de Portugal. With more than 50, 25 years of experience in the tourism sector in the areas of strategy, marketing intelligence and innovation. He is, uh, as I said, uh, the senior director um, and is in Turismo de Portugal and chairman of the OECD Tourism Committee and European Travel Commission's Market Intelligence Group. And he is expert in several work groups from United Nations World uh, Tourism Organization, OECD, ETC, and the WEF. And uh, also today, uh, Dr. Ahmed Al Sohaili, uh, he's the group head of technology at the Red Sea Global Company. And prior to joining the Red Sea Global, he was uh, chief technologist and chief advisor for the governor of Communications and Information Technology Commission, the CITC, where he led during his five-year tenure the development and launch of 5G services in the kingdom that made Saudi's 5G one of the fastest and highest performing networks globally. So without further delay, I give the floor to Mr. Ramon Ferri. Ramon, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Tania. Please let me know if you can see the screen. Yes. Okay, thank yes, you very much, Tania. Thank you very much to the ITU, to this, web, uh, to this um, webinar concerning digital transformation for cities and communities. So I'm going to just to give some words on concerning the smart destination platform in Spain and how we are just uh, trying to plan uh, the digital transformation of uh, smart tourism destinations in Spain. So we started just working on the ITU United for Smart and Sustainable Cities concerning the city platform smart group. And in this city, city platform smart group, we have five working groups Four of them have uh, actually uh, a deliverable uh, concerning the different aspects of uh, city platform and how the city platform we can help cities to transform and to perform better services to cities. So one of them is the working group four that is concerning the smart tourism, a path to more secure and resilient destination. And as you can see in this uh, main main figure. Um, the smart tourism platform has a great number of stakeholders and a great number of solutions. And then we have a number of information sources coming from IoT, coming from social media, coming from behavioral data from other uh, companies, and of course, in some kind of uh, contextual and supporting data from, from the tourism sector. And then you have to provide three main uh, to three main actors tourists managers of the city of destination and companies with a, a concrete number of uh, technical solutions in order to provide this service to the uh, to the tourists so at the end um, we have a tourist intelligence platform that with all these data coming together then they have the possibility to have a holistic view of all the destination be, with the uh, capacity to perform reports, predictive analysis, simulation, comprehensive scorecard, and some tools of uh, intelligent, artificial intelligence, and so on. So, in this context, in this um, uh, context of a smart destination, then how uh, we can define the smart uh, destination platform and how we are taking from coming from this deliberable how we are planning in, in Spain. So we are creating a smart destination platform for all the country that is a service platform that incorporates a collection of digital solutions 
in order to, pro to provide uh, the main public for problems and market uh, failures. Um, and of course, managing the country scale, uh, taking all our destinations with a thousand SMEs, with one of the objectives is to try to provide the digital transformation of the destination, and of course, trying to solve the problems for all the tourism ecosystem, just to provide solutions for the connected tourists uh, with the ability to have uh, an interaction instrument with, uh, that uh, en enhance their experience, also to provide some kind of a strong uh, solution for a tourist destination in order to have a comprehensive vision and governance of all the tourist ecosystem. And of course, also to have the possibility but not, not uh, giving any enterprise behind and then giving the possibility to everyone, micro enterprises, to provide this, um, to be in the digital space and be able to, to provide services to tourists. And how we are uh, planning our uh, solution, just from a general overview, uh, coming from the deliverable that uh, we show you and we are presenting today, uh, we need a uh, distributed intelligence in every destination in order to put together the companies, the tourists, the citizen, and also the city managers, the destination managers. And how we are going to provide that? So we are going to provide a, a funding from the European Commission Recovery and Resilience Plan. So we are going to have a a call for more than 50 destinations in Spain in order to provide this, this smart destination, this uh, unique platform um, for, for all the cities. And then what we would like to provide is uh, uh, that data come up to this uh, meta platform in order to provide the a common services for all the destinations in Spain. So then what we are going to do is an, an intelligent uh, tourist site, and then we would like to provide a, a data space for tourists with the ability to have a distributed information and sovereignty and, and sovereignty, and also to provide open innovation for all the, the researchers and to be able to provide market store uh, with uh, the ability to any company to have this um, solution in the in the digital ecosystem and then we will like to provide these uh, common services that are um, are are going to provide solutions also for all the the destinations so how we are going to make the digital transformation of the destination in spain so we have defined in order to provide an homogeneous uh, transformation, we have defined 68 functionalities concerning every aspect of the touring uh, travel cycle in order to provide a common services for um, different, differential value proposition of the destination before travel and during the travel providing promotion and commercialization, interaction destination with tourists and companies, and of course in this during travel to the destination to have possibility to have planning management and governance, sustainability, city to services, knowledge performance and, and innovation. And at the end, we will, pro we will like to provide uh, after travel uh, uh, in common services in order to make all this to this travel cycle. And then we need, we think that with this digital transformation, we are going to provide an homogeneous transformation and then we will like to provide also a, a number of uh, 20 common services uh, that, is, uh, that we are going to get the information from the different destination in Spain and to provide a, a, a added value services that go down again to this destination. So in the first part, we would like to create a common semantic uh, CMS, a professional web portal, in the promotion and commercialization, we would like to, be, to have a way level destination web portal, landing pages, CRM, and loyalty modules, online sales modules for public services, but also wide level uh, tourist app or virtual advisor, and also providing concerning planning, management, and governance 
a, a great number of, of services concerning a smart to the destination module app for the participation of tourist companies, location intelligent models, self diagnostic system for a smart tourist destination, SMEs digital maturity index, and so on. And for the knowledge performance and innovation, we would like to provide common services concerning tourist intelligence system module, tourist survey model, uh, online reputation, citizen perception, data exploitation forecasting and simulation model, performance dashboard and destination dashboard for companies. So with this common great number of services, we do like it just to provide common service for the country and digital transformation from the destination. So then we will be able to have a common overview of this uh, to this cycle. But at the end, with this digital transformation, we have to work in with our smart tourist destination network with more than 40, 457 uh, public administrations, with more than uh, 91 collaborators and, and other three observers and other destinations also. So when we, we have a, a cycle where this digital uh, transformation is performing in the in every uh, destination. So then we are just providing a diagnostic, uh, a diagnosis with them, and then we are providing some kind of strategy planning, and and then we have an execution plan, and at the end we have a distinction if they arrive to this milestone three. So then we are working with these five main axes that are concerning digital to, um, tourist destinations. So then we are working on governance, innovation, technology, sustainability, and accessibility. So then we have digital transformation from one part and organizational transformation for the other in order to provide them with capabilities to um, be able to have this overall ecosystem for the country. And this is all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ramon, for the comprehensive landscape. Now I give the floor to David, please. The floor is yours. Uh, okay. Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you, Tania, for giving me the floor. Uh, let me let me share my screen. Well, uh, let me know if you can see. Yes, put it please. Okay. So I'm very grateful uh, for the opportunity of sharing our experience uh, with all of you, uh, our experience in, in this field of smart destinations. Uh, well, I know it just have uh, between eight and ten minutes, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be to be brief. Well, this is the the index of, of my presentation. Uh, next minutes, uh, uh, I will be talking about three issues. You can see at uh, the screen. Uh, first of all, overall view context about us, about who we are. Uh, in the second point, there will be small decisions in by Valenciana, our our vision. How do we do it? And finally, at the end, uh, I will be talking about main tools in this transition towards the smart destination model in, in my region, the region of Valencia. Well, but first of all, uh, 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 how I said, I think it's necessary to, consist, to contextualize who we are and what we, uh, we do before starting to talk in detail. Uh, I think the context will, will help you to understand uh, all of it. Uh, well, what is this? What is this of of Imbatur? Well, the Imbatur Valencian Institute of Tourism Technologies is the, the branch of Tourism Community of Valenciana, specialized in the generation and transfer uh, of tourist knowledge through so development uh, of uh, RTI projects and adaptation uh, to new trends in all aspects of of the tourist market. We are located in Benidorm, uh, our most important tourist destination, as I think you know. Well, we, we depend on the uh, Turismo Comunitat Valenciana, which is the Valencia Region Tourist Board. Uh, it is a public company attached uh, to the regional Ministry of Tourism uh, of the region of Valencia. One of its roles, obviously, is to promote research, development and innovation among tourist destinations and companies in, in our region of, of Valencia. Well, 
which are our areas of activity. So uh, three main areas concentrate our activity. We put the focus in uh, smart destinations, uh, RT and I, and, and the smart data office, which is the last uh, tool, the last area we recently uh, launched. Well, the, the second issue of, of my speech, of my, of my speech, my presentation, it's our vision on the smart destination. Uh, I, I don't know, I don't know uh, how is conceived smart planning in other regions. I don't know how, how they are approaching this area. And uh, we have been doing it slowly almost 10 years since we started in 2014, trying to ensure both the political and the strategic framework. Mm. It, it, uh, we think it is the only way, or it was the only way to guarantee our smart destination strategy will be working in the future. Uh, so, our tourism regulation, uh, general and focus or specializing destination that we call Estatuto Municipio Turístico, reflects uh, what we understand our vision on the future of tourism, uh, what we would like to be in the future, and also our strategical vision our white paper called Libro Blanco on our strategy 2025. I mean, sustainability, governance, innovation, accessibility, technology and intelligence in order to become an, an smart territory in the future. Uh, and those, those are the pillars of our smart destination model, the region of Valencia smart destination model uh, that you can see at, the, at this slide. Um, and, uh, well, this this is like uh, in this is like you can you can also appreciate how we started in two thousand fourteen and what uh, how we are keep on doing it currently. Our vision is clear: smartness doesn't mean technology. Smartness means it's related to governance. Before starting implementation of technology solutions, we must organize the base of our destinations. It's management who participate, who, uh, which areas of departments are involved, always thinking of trans transversality of tourism activity uh, and the role of the local private sector. Never forget them, obviously. It means, it means always, it means open mind, collaboration and cooperation. This is briefly what we understand as governance. And this is the first step in the pathway to a smart destination horizon. Well, well, in summary about our vision, you can highlight three points uh, about, about our vision, sorry. Smart destinations as a management model in itself and focus, and therefore focus on the reality of tourist destinations and the peculiarities which constantly evolve. Smart destinations as an open and dynamic model, permeable to changes, challenges, and new trends. And finally, smart destination as a model of continuous improvement, which requires the permanent updating of challenges, requirements, and indicators that guarantee the evolution of destination in this, in this context. Well, and, and finally, I would like to, to introduce three main tools uh, helping us to develop and make reality our model, our strategy. First of them is our smart destination regional regional network we call Red DTI CV. Uh, we are we are the only smart regional network in Spain. Our network was born in uh, 2019, and it is an authentic ecosystem made up of uh, companies, uh, tourist companies, technology companies, universities, and obviously destinations, which are main main protagonists. Currently, we have uh, more than 100, uh, I think 108 exactly, destinations involved and working with the common reference of our model. Um, main objectives, objectives of our network, well, we can highlight two of them. The digitization of tourist uh, activity for improving tourist management of destinations and also the cooperation between public and private sector. Well, the second of the tools I told you before is our smart destination office. 
it's an operational tool, tool provided and managed by, by, by us, by Invatur. It is the, the way to visualize, channel, manage, and, and take care of all the, the information generated by the strategy and projects developed by, by our destinations. And it is also the tool to control, to manage uh, the evolution of our destinations according with uh, our smart destination system indicators, which is based on 155 indicators related to the pilots of our model. Uh, this is, it is the, the, the only smart regional office in Spain. You can find many smart offices, but in the local level, and most of them, most of them specialize in data management. And the third tool, finally, the, the, is, is our smart data office, which is, I told you before, the, the last service we launched in, in the last years. Uh, what is it, its purpose? How, how does it work? Well, we provide information about who, what, why, when, how, concerning our destination theme and offer. We give our destinations uh, weekly or, or monthly, it depends on the data. Uh, we give them information to make it their decisions in marketing. Uh, we manage information from the national and regional statistical system offices so that's in the official statistics but we combine it with information from the mailing online players as google Mabrian, tablet x etc all reports all reports or statistics we produce are available on our website uh, well my data office is not an intended platform yet it is the first step first step in the road of helping or transforming our destinations to get or to be more competitive to so data, different and current data. And what well, that, that, that's all about my, my presentation. Uh, if, if you want, if you want to know more about uh, our activity reports or, or whatever, uh, about our roads since today, uh, well, everything is available in, in our website. Check it and, and then enjoy it. Uh, here you have my email. Thank you very much for, for your attention. And if you have any questions, thank, thank you, you very much, David, for, all, for sharing your experience. Um, now I give the floor to Sergio, please. Sergio, the floor is Hello. Yours. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, first of all, ITU, for inviting us to, to participate in this in this uh, in this webinar and glad to be with our with our colleagues in the in this uh, session so i'll try to share my screen so please tell me if everything is going in the right direction Perfect. so uh, my my purpose for for today is actually to give you an overview of our, about our experience about um, promoting data-driven tourism management in in portugal we've been working uh, in in this in this project since 2015 it has been i would say uh, um, uh, a nice and very challenging journey especially in the in the last two years where i would say priorities change but in in the sense of data users i believe it were uh, very very interesting moments in terms of in terms of progress so a bit uh, about us uh, well, Turismo Portugal is uh, is the national tourism administration authority in, in in Portugal. We are a bit different uh, DMO like uh, uh, most most countries because we have in one single organization what we call the ministry, the part of the administrative part of of, uh, of regulation of the sector, and at the same time the the, the marketing one. So, as you can see, we have in at Turismo Portugal we cover basically all the value chain of the sector from lic licensing, classification of the of, uh, of the tourism establishments and hotels, uh, all the licenses systems regarding uh, tourism animation, travel agencies, etc. We are a funding agency. We run our own funds and also new funds. We also are in charge of marketing and promotion, so we run uh, to uh, visit Portugal as as a brand. We are also a human resources training agency because we are responsible for 
12 hotel schools all over the country. And finally, we are gambling regulators. Um, in terms of, uh, well, together with all these uh, pillars of activity of our, of our institute, we have two areas, which is knowledge and innovation, which are under my, my coordination and basically are driving this uh, challenge of, uh, of smart destinations as a whole. In terms of data, my, my presentation for today will be mainly focused on, on the role of data for improving smart, uh, smart destinations. And here, I would say we've, we've positioned ourselves, and I, I think we work right now as, as a data hub for the tourism industry. So we have and we concentrate and we gather from several data sources um, uh, what it is official data statistics available for the sector. And here we have the uh, Statistics Portugal, we have the Central Bank of Portugal, we have our own uh, uh, supply platforms, but at the same time, several services that we deliver within our sector. And we also gather in, in, in data from international organizations. What we do, which is not, I would say, as common as it, is we mix these official data sources, what we call business data. And by business data, we're talking about data from the airports, data from uh, the, the accounts of, of, of enterprises. Uh, we have also data from uh, credit card and debit cards of, of, of international visitors to Portugal. Uh, we have also airlines data to actually drive our, uh, our hair connectivity strategy. And we also moved into uh, mobile data as a way of um, monitoring mobility of tourism uh, around the country. So what we, with uh, our strategy of about building this, this um, data hub was, uh, 85% of, of, uh, of, of companies in Portugal are SMEs, very, very sometimes micro, micro uh, SMEs. And the problem, the challenge is they don't have time, they don't have the resources, they don't have the money to actually get all these kind of, uh, all these data sources, they don't, they don't have people dedicated to that. So what we've done, we've collect the data from all these sources and we, we, we deliver it in one single platform, publicly available for everyone. Um, and with that, we are supporting uh, decision making at the firm level, but at the same time at destination level. Uh, and actually, uh, as I uh, as I was saying, COVID nineteen uh, was actually an accelerator for the for the use of data. I think all of us around the table should should share that that idea. Um, why? Because the, the the world like we know it and we used to monitor it changed dramatically from one day to the other. And from also in our in our office, from one day to the other, we we changed completely the scope of our work. We start uh, we start using and monitoring the aid support measures that we we gave to to the public sector, uh, and at the real time because companies were suffering and also we had the need of accountability to say what we are doing to actually uh, support those companies. At the same time, we, 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 we launched uh, uh, one initiative called Clean and Safe Stamp. So we were the first uh, country in the world to launch a, a clean and safe, uh, safe mobility uh, a seal uh, that we managed to get to 22,000 uh, companies that actually subscribed to the, the seal and uh, in all uh, areas of of, uh, of of the tourism sector. And this was a very important um, thing that was not only uh, do, done uh, through COVID, it, it was something that will stay for the future. And we are just giving an idea, we are moving from clean and safe to actually a resilience um, platform so we can help companies to drive with all their challenges in the long term. So all of this became, I would say, new data needs, but they are not only staying here as COVID uh, lasted, but actually they're going to be for, here for, for the future. At the same time, understanding mobility. We, we've lost completely all, all the tracks, where people are going, which kind of destinations, which kind of, uh, of, of parts of the country, in what time of the year. And this was very, very important to understand where we're looking for. Also, airline data became one very important data source to understand the future because they basically 80% uh, of the tourists that travel to Portugal travel by plane and understanding future, future trends in terms of, of, uh, of air capacity helped us to actually uh, be able to uh, understand a, a bit about the future and predict about the future. That was something 
that uh, during COVID became a serious need from the private sector, um, but actually something that also stayed right now for, for the future at the, at the same way we're talking about the uh, searches for, for Portugal uh, from each one of the markets became a main trend for the future. Also understanding patterns of consumption and this, for example, helped us to understand that actually some destinations in Portugal didn't suffer with COVID in terms of, of spending because you know, people uh, start choosing less remote and more remote destinations inst instead of tr traditional destinations. And without these data sources, we didn't understood what was the change that was happening in, in our sector. At the same time, moving a bit on travel behavior. How, how, how is the lead of, of, of bookings to Portugal, how, how, are they, how, how are they changing? How things are, are working? How employment became a serious, a very serious topic also for us. So understanding what are the gaps in terms of, uh, uh, of employment that we're living. A lot of sustainability put it on the table as actually as needs. And after COVID passed, we are not taking that out of, of the system because people still want to understand more about where we are in, 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 those, in those topics. And my, my final points that I would like to share with you is we, we've, we've passed uh, five years to build, I would say a very robust uh, platform with more than 35 data sources, uh, daily updated with a lot of reports, a lot of dashboards, a lot of, I would say, very interesting stuff in terms of, of understanding the market. But one thing that we also need uh, is actually the usage of, of, of data by who has to take the decisions. And we know that sometimes the decision is made not with the best data, uh, and sometimes the, the data that is needed for the decision-making process is not available. So what we've, uh, we've, been, we've been pushing with our community to do is actually build uh, use cases that can, can actually prove the value of data and why using data for, ta for taking solutions. A, a couple of examples. One here, we had a huge uh, a strike of the transport system in Portugal in 2019. Uh, and what we've done in a record time uh, at work was to understand where should we put the emergency gas stations in the country. So gas, gas, gas distribution was not available to all all over the country so what we've, we've tried to do in two days actually for supporting the ministry of interior uh, ministry of homeland affairs and our our ministry to take the decision where to put the gas stations we basically tried to simulate where tourists would be where were the the hotels where the tourists would st would stay where were the gas stations and what would be the best loca location possible uh, to to install those em emergency gas stations. And this was actually a, a huge success because in the record time, we were the only ones providing uh, data with actually the impact. Uh, the areas, as you can see in green, are this distance in 30 minutes from the gas station. Uh, so what what is the range of the gas station in terms of 30 minutes and what are the, uh, the hotels and accommodation services that were covered or not covered uh, in that in that sense. So that would help, I would say, Minister of Homeland Affairs in, in the same way. Another one, uh, you, this is from 2021, last year's uh, Champions League final. And we also had a challenge in a, in a, in a couple of, of, of days to understand uh, the impact of, uh, of uh, such an event in the, still in the COVID environment. So just to remind you, we were close to to international traffic before COVID, and we opened that for the, U the UEFA Champions League final uh, that take place in Porto to, with two British teams. And we wanted to understand when people are coming, how much, do, uh, how, much how long they, they are staying in the in, in the destination, at what time of the day they were actually uh, uh, there. And this exercise that we use with, with mobile data help us to understand how many people in the day of the event were in the surroundings of the stadium, which were the, their nationalities, as you can see in yellow, for example, it's the, the share of, of, um, of British, British citizens that were uh, in, in Porto in that, in that period. So we can understand that uh, on the 29th, where, where was the date of, of, of final, and the 30s, there were the two days where the British were more 
than uh, 50 percent of the uh, of the tourists in in the city of Porto actually understanding where tourists came from to that event so these were uh, actually use cases practical use cases for people to understand the usage of data and how can data actually can um, help them to take uh, real-time decision-making processes and this was i would say very very interesting case that would all always last for for the future because now what everyone is asking well let's let's do the same for every same event that we are uh, having in our country to understand impacts and want to understand actually the value chain of all of, of all the sector and it's all, all for my side so uh, happy to to answer to any question that you might have also uh, share with you our our platform which is travel bi by tourism Portugal. also the, the qr code it will enable access to the to the platform well um, can contact us if you need any any question any feedback from your side happy to help thank you very much Thank you very much, Sergio. Very impressive and, and uh, useful to see that uh, connection between the smart city data and the uh, smart tourist destinations creation. So um, now we are uh, facing our last presentation. Uh, last but not least, uh, Ahmed, please, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. It's an absolute pleasure um, to be with you today. I am just about to share my screen, so please bear with me. Here we go. So my name is Ahmed Al-Sahaly. I am the Group Head of Technology at the Red Sea Global. Not and I'm going to tell you, you're not seeing it? No. Okay, let me try one more time. Can you see it now? Not yet. Do this. Does this work? Now we can see it. Thank you very much. Perfect. So my name is Anandos Sahaly. I am the Group Head of Technology for the Red Sea Global. I'm going to try to tell you a little bit about our destination and how we're trying to drive sustainable development for future generations. So. The Red Sea Global Company is a, uh, a company established and owned by the Saudi Public Investment Fund. It's one of the flagship Vision 2030 projects, and we are currently concurrently developing two destinations. Uh, one is referred to as the Red Sea Project, and the other is the Amala Project, both of them on the Red Sea, which is located at the west coast of Saudi Arabia. And these are just the, the first two projects we're working on. The company is also working on a dozen or more developments across the Red Sea, which we will be sharing with the world very soon. So um, the premise of, of our developments is centered around three pillars. The first is setting a new standard in sustainable development, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a sec. We're talking about two very unique destinations that have um, truly unique nature. Uh, when you talk about the Red Sea, you're talking about um, the home for over a thousand species of fish, hundred species of coral. Um, there's a good chunk, hundreds of fish species that only exist in the Red Sea. So we have truly unique um, marine life and, uh, and the landscape is simply spectacular. Um, the third pillar is obviously positioning Saudi Arabia on the global tourism map by creating truly unique and differentiated uh, tourist experiences. So if you look at the location of, of the project, um, it's located between the cities of Duba, Alwaj, and Ombudj. So we're talking about roughly 300 kilometers of, of coastline length and a total area that exceeds 30,000 kilometers. Um, this unique location where we're building an international airport um, is accessible almost anywhere from the world. and Hundreds of millions of people can access it within three hours. 
all year long, you have really nice weather um, on the warmer side, but which is my personal preference, and I'm sure it's, it's the preference of a lot of you, especially these days. And um, we are going to be heavily leveraging technology to provide something unique uh, in two dimensions. First is the, the unique um, uh, guest experience powered by technology, and more, most importantly is preserving um, this virgin nature that we have at the West Coast of Saudi Arabia. So when we talk about sustainability, we're talking about being fully aligned with all 17 um, SDGs of the United Nations to address the global challenges that we're collectively trying to uh, resolve. Uh, so the whole destinations from day one will be free of single-use plastics because they are a huge hazard for the environment. They're going to be carbon neutral, so no carbon emissions whatsoever from day one. And we're achieving this by being 100% uh, reliant on renewable and clean energy. So we have our own independent grid, which is uh, among the largest in the world, if not the largest when it comes to 100% uh, green grids. We're developing this uh, by leveraging the world's largest battery storage system at 1.2 gigawatt hours. Uh, so it's essentially the world's largest clean microgrid. Um, all our buildings are going to be LEED Platinum uh, certified. And even within the construction phase, we are producing zero, zero waste to the landfill. Uh, so all of this, you add it up and you end up with a 30% net positive conservation uh, benefit for the world and a saving of over 500,000 tons of CO2 emissions. How are we achieving this? This is all going to be powered by a smart platform, which is the beating heart of our destinations. So whether we're talking about the environment and how we interact with it and how we monitor it, our energy, how we produce it, how we consume it, uh, the waste, how it's produced, how it's processed, our transportation, all the economic activities, all our efforts for sustainability, the people we connect, and uh, how we make sure that the people, whether they're residents, their visitors, their employees, they have a really high living standard and really contribute positively to the environment around them. Rather than taking from the environment, we want to be giving back. So, um, what we're doing is instead of just providing these services, we're leveraging connectivity and data collection to optimize all of these services. Because every watt hour matters to us, uh, and uh, every drop of water matters, um, every aspect of the ecosystem matters to us. So by building everything from the beginning to be smart, and connecting everything together and integrating everything together and leveraging the insights. That's how we build uh, a lot of synergies, a lot of efficiencies that are uh, probably yet to be realized anywhere in the world. So we're talking about, and this is a non-exhaustive list, it's just 50 or more of the smart services that we're, that we're working on right now, but they're essentially can, they can essentially be grouped into four uh, sets. So one is about delivering exceptional tourism experience, livability standards at large, uh, and environment is, is a very important element to this, and it's in our DNA from, from day one. And the whole optimization of, of everything that happens within, within our cities and communities, so that everything uh, becomes sustainable, not just environmentally, but also economically by having you know, the most efficient transportation, the most efficient energy generation and energy consumption and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm going to give you two examples just to give you a taste of how we leverage the smartness. So if we talk about um, delivering a differentiated tourist experience powered by smart technologies. So it starts by you know, having a very powerful uh, application, whether it's smartphone or iPad or uh, computer or even web based, but essentially you can do all of your registrations, visa applications, bookings, all of it online, you know, at the comfort of your house. Uh, and then from this, so even before you arrive, you have access to everything and you can um, do everything seamlessly with a few clicks. Once you arrive, uh, you're talking about uh, very seamless and touchless entry experience. 
And then all our transportation systems are linked together and optimized. So even if you're going to be requiring different means of transportation from air to ground uh, to water, they can all be booked uh, you know, in conjunction together. And the whole thing is optimized so that it minimizes your wait time. And even if you're using multiple different transportation tools, the multimodal uh, mobility application is going to take care of them. Uh, we're talking about leveraging uh, smartphones and wearables uh, to have a hands-free experience. And even the luggage, the international airport that we're building, is actually not going to have a luggage carousel because uh, when once you arrive, you're just going to be heading out to your destination. And as you check in, you're going to find your luggage waiting for you in your room. Um, 24-7 assistance through all possible means is, is going to be provided uh, through a very intelligent um, CRM and navigation for those uh, leveraging their own transportation will be provided and a very important component for us is making sure that everyone uh, really has access to real-time data on their environmental impact. Uh, another element that I'm going to close with is environmental because this is extremely important for us. So every aspect of the environment, of our ecosystem, whether it's marine or terrestrial, is going to be monitored around the clock. And this has already started even before the destination hope because we need to establish a baseline. We need to make sure that the construction we perform doesn't impact the environment in any way. And we need to make sure that after we open, this continues to be the case. Um, in addition to the environmental uh, monitoring, we're actually doing a lot of things, for example, water. So um, we have a nursery that has produced already 2 million trees that are being planted across the destinations we're building. And by 2030, we're going to be building more than, uh, we're going to be planting more than 25 million trees. So smart agriculture is going to be critical for us because we need to make sure that not a single drop of water uh, gets wasted. And actually today, the destination was blessed with, uh, with a lot of rain. So uh, our irrigation systems did not work today because the plants have already gotten a lot of water. So this intelligent um, adaptability uh, maximizes the utilization of our water and makes sure that not a single drop of water is wasted. Same thing applies to our energy consumption, whether it's charging our electric vehicles, because all the, the vehicles on site are going to be electric to ensure that there's no uh, uh, carbon emissions from our transportation systems. When do the vehicles charge? How does this uh, link with the grid? How does this link with the energy that we're producing? All of this comes together through the smart engine to provide something uh, that has a level of efficiency unprecedented globally. And this is actually how we produce uh, our uh, zero carbon emissions commitment. So a lot of countries, a lot of jurisdictions, a lot of cities are talking about going carbon neutral by 2030, 40, or 50. We are going to be achieving this next year with the opening of our first set of destinations from day one. And uh, this is how we're going to be doing it. And I hope that uh, you know this will make you a little bit more excited to look forward to our opening next year, where we're going to be sharing much more information and actually be able to show you all of these systems in action. And I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Uh, yes, now I'm. Uh, we are going to have these questions and answers. I would like to uh, go back to the title of this episode 19 and ask uh, Ramon if he could identify the key aspects of the road to digital tourism. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tania. Uh, yeah, I think that um, it's really important to to have a a unique repository for the city of data, and then uh, to be able to work with the complete um, uh, tourist ecosystem, and then also um, to be able also to provide a, a clear uh, integration and interoperability with with all the ecosystem in order to provide good services and at the end i think that it's really important to have uh, analytical tools also to provide the uh, information coming to to the planners and operators of the city and of course it's, it's really important to trying to work in a 
in a network way in order to take the information coming up and then obtain information go down and then be able to to have co concrete services that is really important and and, com and really difficult to have uh, nowadays thank you very much ramon then um I would like to ask uh, David um, regarding uh, the Comunidad Valenciana. Why did you decide to take the initiative to start working in the concept of smart destinations? Well, thank you, Zane, for the question. Uh, basically, because uh, our region needed to, to evolve. Uh, in 2013, we thought that uh, the future of tourism competitiveness wouldn't work um, based on price and, and number of visitors. Uh, we were convinced that we, we had to explore new ways of improving or re reshaping our model. And this is this is the main reason we try to adapt smart city to destinations. Well, we are convinced that our future as uh, tourist region has to be more, more sustainable, digital and inclusive. And based on reshaping management, process of, of our destination, which is called, we call it governance. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Oh. Um, then to Sergio, um, we have seen that there's a huge progress in data needs with the pandemic and are destinations and companies ready for using all those data? Yeah, as, as I mentioned in my presentation, I think w we all felt that during COVID, information got and data got played an incredible role. We, we were searching every day to uh, data from all kinds of sources to understand where we were in dealing with the pandemic, in dealing with vaccines, in opening borders or closing borders, flights up or flights down, number of employees that were... Uh, they were leaving the, 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 the sector. So I think this built an incredible interest from, from the, our stakeholders to actually use data. So it's also an opportunity. And when we leave uh, the COVID environment, uh, as we can call it, we, we left the COVID environment, uh, a war in Ukraine was on the table. And at the same time, now uh, all the uncertainty, economic uncertainty that we're living. So the, the the demand for 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 the, the interest for data became also a current demand of, of companies and that's that's amazing so I, I would say for us we, we've been seeing a huge progress in terms of adoption of data five, five by for example our destinations we've we've uh, we've designed a strategy to actually all our regions uh, have observatories that support them in terms of driving their their strategy at, at regional level and that was a, a huge uh, process we're also working Deal with 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 uh, with with companies, but I would say one uh, message I would like to leave left here is it's important that people understand. So communication is a key element, and sometimes ourselves, data producers, on researchers or academia, we are not focused on the final user of our data. We are more focused on the process. So I think now. It's very important to better communicate and to give actually the proper data to the ones that have to take their decisions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Then I would like uh, uh, Ahmed uh, to to explain us uh, what drives the smart strategy for the Red Sea Global. Please. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's the core of our. Um, DNA. So our slogan is, as a company is for the people and for the planet. And it's so we have two pillars here, protecting the planet, protecting the environment, protecting and preserving the natural treasures of, of the Red Sea. So that grabs a lot of the work we're doing. And it's actually why we're going uh, zero carbon emissions from day one, uh, zero, zero waste to landfill, no single use plastics and so on and so forth. Uh, and also all the environmental smart, smart applications, monitoring, you name it, and how that integrates with our grid, how that integrates with our water system, with our waste system, so on and so forth. And the other part is for the people. So how do you provide a unique and seamless uh, and differentiated user experience? So how you can customize your stay, uh, easily book more so than store a single click, 
not having to worry, worry about different platforms, uh, you know, having one stop shop for everything, uh, even the little details like you know, internet of the destination. So one of the features we're implementing is, is called seamless internet. Uh, where all the Wi-Fi access points, be it at the airport, be it at um, any of our facilities, be it any, at any of the hotels, all of them uh, can talk to each other so that when you log into a single Wi-Fi point, that's the single login you're ever going to do at the destination. And then wherever you go, your credentials are already verified. So your Wi-Fi experience becomes very seamless and always connected and so on and so forth. So, from the macro level all the way, all the way to the little details uh, to make everything just frictionless, seamless, and just happening in the background. Uh, I think that's essentially the two core pillars that we, we drive our smart strategy on. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Thank you all the four panelists for this uh, view of the of this important issue with the with the smart uh, tourist destinations and uh, the road to to the digital tourism now i i hand uh, hand back uh, to to Mithili. Mithili, thank you thank you dr marcos for taking us to the session A special thanks also the distinguished speakers for allowing us and taking us through the exploration of this multifaceted topic that is smart tourism it was also interesting to see the kind of transition that we've made from a pre-COVID to a post-COVID situation with relation uh, to tourism. So now to formally conclude the session, I would like to move on to the next section of this webinar, for which I would first like to pass the floor again to Ms. Sandra Carvalho, who is the Chief of the Tourism Market Intelligence and Competitiveness Sector at the UNWTO. Over to you for the closing remarks. We've learned, learned a lot from the experiences that were shared here today. I want to thank ITU once again for hosting this webinar and UNE for joining us. As I said in my opening remarks, I think this is just the first step of a stronger collaboration between our organizations. In today's discussion, many interesting takeaways have been brought up, such as how digitalization and the democratization of data at every level of the tourism value chain is essential for the tourism ecosystem for effective planning and management. In this line, it is important to stress how the collection and processing of data in an integrated manner using digital platforms can actually leverage and enhance the competitiveness and sustainability of a tourism destination. It has also been stressed that we need a strong and inclusive governance model. We need to create those models based on public, private community management and cooperation to ensure that we have a smart solution in destinations that benefits all. To wrap up, UNWTO wants to stress the importance of having a collective, inclusive and responsible vision of tourism where innovation technology can join forces for a more sustainable and inclusive sector. For us, the role of destination management organizations is critical. We need to give them the structure, we need to give them the capacities and we need to make them lead destinations through the concept of smart destinations and the concept of star cities together. I'm sure we can do that. Thank you once again to all that shared today's examples and also you that followed us online. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Car Ms. Carval, for the closing remarks. We will now move on and give the floor to Ms. Christina Buetti, who is the counselor of ITC Study Group 20 at the ITU. Over to you, Ms. Buetti. Dear colleagues, panelists, and participants, what we have learned today is that the tourism industry has undergone continuous growth and the dynamism of the sector has helped to invite technology-centric innovations to provide tourism services based on new demands and increasing numbers of tourists. The digital revolution in the tourism sector has paved the way for easier travel in terms of planning, management of trips, along with monitoring the local environment. We are also now witnessing active city level initiatives oriented towards driving the smart tourism agenda forward. 
what we have observed today from today's discussion is that the concept of smart tourism blurs the distinction between online and on-site processes by leveraging smart tourism technologies like IoT and AI implemented to collect and analyze data from physical infrastructures and portable devices to transform travel experiences by providing an effective feedback mechanism and promoting destinations via different channels, including social media. Shared services platforms with a collection of digital solutions can act as the fulcrum of enhancing the tourism ecosystem and creating a hyper-connected network. Envisioning a smart destination model based on the coordination of municipalities, technology centers, and business associations is vital for success in this domain. So it is very interesting to see how far the city of Valencia has come in terms of driving smart tourism with strong collaboration and the center and regional levels and coordination with the smart city smart data office. What the challenge remains now is the sustained use of these technologies to cater to the growing number of tourists across the world, keeping in mind that we now live in the post pandemic world. I'm happy to see that Portugal has leveraged COVID-19 as an accelerator for ensuring that adequate emergency responses are embedded in its smart tourism strategies. I would like also to commend the work of Red Sea Global, especially their Vision 2030, which strives to position Saudi Arabia on the global tourism map. The strategy we heard about today is all inclusive and focuses not only on economy by seeking to include aspects related to energy, waste management, connectivity, transportation, and aggregate this data from the smart destination platform. What also caught my attention was the definition of the smart de destination KPIs, which would also help for continuous monitoring. Additionally, with the UFRSSC report described and discussed today, I definitely believe that we are on the right path towards creating smart tourism destination around the world. With dedicated partners like the UNWTO and UNE, I'm sure that we will not fail in this effort. In this regard, allow me to thank Sandra and Tanya for their contribution to this webinar. I really look forward to working together with them in many other projects on smart tourism. Last but not least, thank you to the ITU amazing team, Chiara, Hining, Gifty, Gant and Mike Lee that contributed to organizing this event, which really I do hope that you have enjoyed as much as I did. With the hope that this webinar is the first of many more to come on the topic of smart tourism, I hereby close the session for today. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you for joining this webinar. Thank you very much for the closing remarks and for really wrapping up the session, for taking us to the concluding remarks. We will now formally close the session. But before we end, um, I would like to invite you to the episode 20 of this webinar series, which is dedicated to a one-of-a-kind platform for digital transformation, the U4SSC Austrian Country Hub. Thank you.